It's one of the biggest breakthroughs in unmanned aerial vehicle technology. The high altitude pseudo satellite. It's a UAV which is solar powered. It flies over 20 kilometers above the earth and it can stay airborne for weeks on end. Now the IAF wants this technology and several Indian firms are engaged in a race to acquire this HAPS technology. In fact, one of them has already signed a joint venture with a foreign company to bring these HAPS platforms into India. And joining me in the studio to discuss this are UAE expert Group Captain Narang and my colleague Nivriti Mohan. Over to you first, Nivriti. Since you've broken the story, tell us what we are seeing right now. What is this platform and what's the significance of this visual that we are seeing on this uh, background? First of all, this is the visual that we have acquired from uh, Veda Aerospace who has uh, signed a part partnership, entered into a partnership with a UAE based right. company. So this is HAPS, High Altitude uh, Zero Satellite. Right. It is uh, like a bridge between a drone and a satellite. Right. So it comes it in the space between a satellite and a drone. Drone, yes. And because this a drone is cannot uh, fly. The curvature of the earth almost. It's flying at about 20 kilometers? Yes, it is uh, at an altitude of 20 kilometers. Uh, this is the altitude where a drone cannot fly. Right. And satellites are above this altitude. Yes. And it is, uh, if we uh, consider the importance of this uh, vehicle, right. we can say that it is as important as a satellite and as uh, promising as a satellite because yes. of the altitude that it achieves. Right. right. And it has a surveillance capacity right. as good as a satellite. And most importantly, it doesn't cost us uh, much as a satellite costs because right. it, le uh, it needs a a launcher right. through a rocket as it is launched into the space yes. but we don't need a launcher for this right. and it is a low cost as far as uh, if we compare it with the satellite yes. and it covers the space which is between uh, a drone and a satellite. And you know I want to bring in uh, Group Captain Narang on this sir because you are a UAV expert we have been speaking a lot about this. You know tell us about the importance of this technology that we are seeing. Why is Everyone, every country in the world literally chasing high altitude pseudo satellites. See, uh, you understand that satellites normally operate at 200 kilometers right. and above. Right. Now, if you have to send a satellite to the space, it requires a lot of funding, a lot of technology effort is required. Right. And they, they are operating at uh, very high speed. Yes. So their coverage of that area is for a very short duration. Right. And then if you are operating a UAV, let's say male or hail UAV, it yes. is operating in weather. So right. it is always impacted by weather, whether it can take off or not take off. Right. But these kind of uh, platforms will fly above the operate, uh, where the weather will so exist. So this is, he's flying above the weather. Bar. Weather, yeah. weather right right will remain below that. Below. Uh, you can actually see the clouds, that's correct. Correct. Yes. Mm. So it is well above it. If right. you compare it with the civil airline, it is double the height of civil airline. Right. So when you look at those altitudes, there is no weather. There's Once no you have climbed beyond a weather, right. you will be able to remain airborne. So, uh, I remember a few years back, the IAF had a very radical aircraft, very exclusive aircraft called the MiG-25 Foxbat mm. R. Yes. And that was a stratosphere skimmer as they called it. Yes. Would it be correct to say that this could actually replace the MiG-25 as in it would be ground launched and retrieved very quickly? And uh, uh, Does that fill the gap? No, you can't say it fills the gap, but it provides a capability. Right. See, the MiG-25 could fly at a very high speed. Right. So, you know, it could fly at almost three times the speed of sound if required. Right. So, it could give you fast particular area capability. Right. But this will give you persistent capability for days and weeks. If you right. have an area of interest like Galwan conflict, yes. you could keep it airborne for days and weeks. For days, that's And right. you will not be bothered, you know, whether you have a... Uh, um, surveillance uh, system in airborne or not. Right. The second area is uh, Indian Ocean region. If you look at right. Indian Ocean, it's a huge area. Yes. So you cannot keep a, a manned aircraft airborne for a long period. Absolutely. And if you have they a bad do. weather, they cannot get airborne. Right. Now this machine will remain airborne and when yes. required can come into action. Right. And it's he's solar powered and they've, uh, it's got uh, solar uh, cells on its wings. Uh, and yes, and that's what powers the. Yes, uh, the, the the challenge it uh, when when you send these machines to those altitudes, the challenge right. is. 
they have a limited payload carrying capability. Yes. They are at slow speed. They right. have a huge uh, wing span. Right. But that's the, uh, you know, uh, you have to do the compromise to meet your operational requirement. Right. So it's an asset which all, all, the, all over the world people are trying to exploit. It is an area or a technology right. which was not possible in the pa past, but it has become possible. Right. And India is not behind it. Remember, yeah. Indian Air Force launched the IDEX uh, competition yes. under Open Challenge 1. Right. Now, this is a departure from past uh, uh, practices of Air Force where they were uh, used to acquisition of technology. Right. Here they allowed or invited the industry to come up with innovative solutions. Right. So one of the Indian company, New Space Research and uh, Technologies, yes. private limited, a Bangalore based company, they right. came up with this uh, project, ki we can develop this technology. Right. And Indian Air Force mentored them under Open Challenge 1. Yes. And they recently demonstrated operations up to 20 hours uh, plus. Right. But this was done at a low altitude. Remember, technology is a spiral development yes, process. Yes. So we had demonstrated the capability that we can develop a platform which can remain airborne, based on solar power, remain at a certain height. The right. next phase is taking it to the stratosphere level because right. the trials were uh, conducted in the airspace. Right. Uh, in uh, uh, within the atmosphere. Within the atmosphere. Yes. The next phase is uh, stratosphere is take it to and the here place. I will complement the Indian Navy. Yes. Uh, once this uh, prototype has been proven, Indian Navy has accepted the challenge yes. in the Open Challenge 9. In fact, right. it was done this month itself. Right. And uh, now uh, new space research technology will not only develop it, yes. will supply them an operational platform for further uh, induction. Right. And uh, I, I think one aspect we need to understand is uh, the, the QRs are not rigid. Yes. They are willing to work with the developers to meet the requirements which Indian Navy will uh, need in the right. times to come. Right. And I think that's an opportunity for Indian industry to come up. Right. Here, if you allow me to tell me, a public sector entity, NAL is also... Uh, yes, they're also in this race. Absolutely. Eight and a half hours demo uh, demonstration, flying demonstration. Right. With CSIR. At, with CSIR. Yes. CSIR lab, it's a one of the right. CSIR But lab. you know, Divriti, I want to bring you in on this point because you've been covering uh, drone development and that series that you brought out on the IAF's drone uh, challenge, the Meher Baba Swarm Drone Contest. Yes. Is this a byproduct of that contest where a whole lot of private sector uh, champions were, uh, you know, uh, funded and encouraged, uh, whether it's uh, VEDA or it's New Space, all of them came out of this contest. Yes, you won't be surprised, uh, you are also saying this that uh, both the companies who are working on HAPS yes. right now, they are the product of Meher Baba Swan Drone yes. Contest and they uh, were uh, they participated in the contest and they uh, bagged the con uh, contracts also right. for the swarm swarm drones. Yes. Now one thing that uh, comes into my mind that because IAF uh, did this whole program, they supported uh, newcomers, the startups. Yes. So uh, there is a little bit of collaboration that we can not little bit. It is a big collaboration between. Uh, IAF and the private sector that we can see yes. and government is promoting also. That's so what sir, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Captain Narang mentioned. I wanted mentioned. to ask uh, Captain Narang that uh, if we see a civil and military partnership and collaboration in China. Uh, do we see civil and military partnership in India? So uh, when I look at civil drone uh, uh, sector, I think Indian government really brought a, a transformational policy in 2021 when they really changed the April 2021 uh, policy, US policy to a drone policy, which was industry friendly. But uh, to talk about civil military fusion, we if we compare it with the US and uh, EASA, I think we still need to have a Atmanirbharta policy in the civil uh, industry. Secondly, we need R&D programs to integrate these civil drones in the Indian airspace. We also need a program of, uh, you know, uh, such R&D initiatives where enabling technologies if you understand uh, if you recollect lot of our uh, components are being imported mm -hmm. if you have to make those components indigenously somebody yes. has to do the hand holding the way we have a uh, you know positive indigenization list in the military right if we have a policy where it is uh, you know followed by all the ministries right. Right. in the you talk of agriculture you talk of swamitva scheme you talk yeah. of uh, you know uh, medical yeah. If we adopt these policies, we can really achieve. So I will, the answer, short answer is not yet, 
but i think it's an opportunity we need to look at it uh, we need to look at a reforms right, right. where we have a national uh, uh, civil drone natnirbhata policy yes. rnd initiative to integrate these drones and in civil the military system. fusion as well civil but military fusion uh, is know, needed uh, group captain naran we were speaking earlier about how the indian armed forces were actually behind the uav race in in a sense that you know countries like iran which made a lot of investments early investments are now reaping the rewards of that china is of course a drone superpower and so is turkey do you think that with haps we get a chance to be level with the rest of the world because we are kind of you know at the frontier oh, of this technology we are you know uh, uh, literally every country in the world is trying to achieve the kind of uh, you know the performance that this haps has demonstrated do you think we have a chance now with haps to catch up with the rest of the world or even lead the world so i i'll say lead is still far away right. but uh, there are two major uh, programs which have really made the difference uh, one is a meher baba competition yes, of course when we launched uh, when indian f chief launched on 8th october 2018 yes it was a very aspirational program remember right. after independence we never had a program yes where we we ever decided to develop a technology which was right. at par with the world absolutely like, even if you talk of space those technologies existed and we caught up but swarm technology yes. even world was devolving so i think uh, swarm brought a change in mindset of indian military that we can develop niche technology absolutely and, and uh, haps is the uh, carry forward of that and right. i think i uh, compliments go to both indian air force and indian yes. navy right. where they are looking at these futuristic technology hand holding some of the startups and msmes right. Right. and then helping them in the design development testing certification process right. now certification is still a challenge yes. because most of our certification entities are used to certifying where existing standards uh, exist yes. so in these two uh, technologies they have to really work with the indian startups right. and form those standards which tomorrow will be our asset in the times to come right but full marks uh, a group captain naran to the indian air force for taking that first jump in this direction yeah. as you mentioned uh, with swarm drone technology way back 6 years back when it was still in its very nascent form but uh, we have a chance now to catch up with the rest of the world and who knows even lead with technologies like the haps the high altitude pseudo satellite they full marks to you they started with just uh, little above 10 crores yes. and now they have turned the industry into a thousand thousands a of thousand crores a thousand crore with industry. potentially worth tens of thousands of crores but thank you very much uh, group captain naran for joining us this evening and my colleague nivrithi for breaking that story one of the first rare visuals of uh, haps owned by an indian company that's out in the there in the stratosphere yes. and uh, you can download the news 9 plus app and watch nivrithi's exclusive story on the ifs shark tank contest she tells you how the air force invested just a few crores and created an entire swarm drone ecosystem for india atmanirbhar bharat download and watch streaming on news 9 plus news is now content subscribe and get free vouchers